Hello, I'm Zagone with Northwest Winterfest. My name is Nellie Barton, and I've been in Spokane uh, for since 2006. Um, this is my sister. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Isabel Mascot, and I've been in Spokane since 2010. Our family came to, um, to the U.S. Uh, from Mexico um, in 1989. My father had been here for years before that, um, and he would just visit us at home. So our family has been here for a lot of years, but uh, neither of us were born here. So. That is correct. We moved to Wenatchee Agricultural. Um, that's where our parents landed. And um, I was about seven years old. Ten. We were ten, and I was ten. And then our youngest sister was three years old at that time. Our family still follows all of our traditions uh, from Mexico. Um, in Mexico, celebrations begin in the middle of December with uh, what we call posadas, and that is a word that means an inn or lodging, um, and it's really a way to tell the Christmas story. Um, and it's every day, um, starting on around the 14th, um, different homes will host a posada, and there's a group outside and a group inside, and it's very similar to Christmas carols. I mean, people in the outside will um, sing and ask to be let into the home. Um, and again, it's just to represent the, the Christmas story and Joseph and Mary looking for a place for Jesus to be born. Uh, and the people inside will sing back um, and it goes back and forth until they're let inside. Once inside, then there's a big party um, and there's a lot of food, a lot of dancing, um, a lot of singing and um, other, other games such as uh, piñatas, uh, which you probably all have heard of, um, and it's just a traditional um, item where uh, that's filled with candy and fruits, and the kids um, hit it and they sing to it, um, and then the the pouring of of the the candy and the fruit uh, represents the the joy. And you've probably all heard of piñatas, and piñatas are these items that are decorated with beautiful colors. Very traditional one is shaped like a star, and it's filled with candy and fruit, and the kids hit it um, and as they sing and they dance, um, and the, the candy and, and the, the fruit pours out for the kids to take as treats. And um, something that I feel like we are lacking um, here in, in the U.S., um, I would say that it's exactly that, the posadas, where the neighbors get together, where there's block parties. Um, there is cities where you can walk downtown and um, you know see the lights here in Spokane as well, which is beautiful, uh, but it's that live music. It's that live tradition where everybody gets together, dance, they sing, there's vendors, different foods. Um, and I think that that is um, something that's extremely important to us, very traditional and very close to our hearts. And the last day of Posadas is on the 24th, and that is when the largest celebration takes place. We celebrate on the 24th, uh, Christmas Eve, that is the biggest day for us, or the biggest night for us. Um, it usually goes pretty much all night long, again, with dancing and music and lots of food. Um, and then that goes into, the, on the 25th, our celebration is really what is called um, Recalentadas, and it's a warm-up and it's a warm up of all our leftovers and it's another way for our family to gather and eat the leftovers and talk about the, the activities before, the night before. Um, so it's, it's also a big day, but our biggest celebration is on 24th. And following Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, like uh, my sister Nelly was talking about, then um, we all get excited for the New Year. So as everyone else, we do celebrate New Year's on the 31st. And um, that day, same thing. We have uh, the same foods that we typically eat during um, Christmas Eve. We do uh, games called Loteria, which is like a bingo um, game that we play. Uh, we dance, there's karaoke, we sing. Um, and uh, for those that do drink, we, we do drink. <laughs> Um, also, for uh, New Year's, there's some rituals actually that in some areas of Mexico, depending on the region of where you're from, they, they believe in. And um, some of them, like for example us, our family grew up with, if you wear specific colors during New Year's, it means something for the New Year. 
So uh, for example, if you wear yellow, um, that means that um, you are hoping to financially be better the following year. If you wear red, that means you are looking for love. Um, so <clears throat> those are some of the beliefs that we have in Mexico. Um, the other tradition that we do for New Year's is where we have the 12 grapes, um, which represents the last 12 seconds of the, of the year, basically. So as soon as the seconds are coming um, for um, entering to the new year, then we eat one of those grapes um, so that we welcome the new year. Um, in other parts of Mexico, for example, my husband's from Mexico City, they believe that sweeping at midnight um, and sweeping towards the outside of your home, it's a good thing because you're getting rid of the bad vibes and welcoming the good vibes. So, um, so again, uh, the New Year's is a big deal for us as well. Following the New Year's, um, it doesn't stop there. This is why we have posadas. We go, we party for like three months. <laughs> um, so uh, January 6th is also a big deal in Mexico. Um, that is called Los Reyes Magos, which is uh, the three wise men, um, representing when the three wise main, men came and um, gave gifts to baby Jesus. Um, so kids in Mexico, um, expect you know some gifts that night on January 6th. Uh, it's like Santa Claus here um, where that's when they receive their gifts from the three uh, wise men. Um, we, also, we also get together on January 6th with the family and we celebrated with um, some hot chocolate and um, some a bread, a traditional Mexican bread called La Rosca and um, there's a little figuring inside of La Rosca of that traditional bread which is right here. We have a little picture for you. Um, within that bread, there's a small figurine that represents baby Jesus. And whoever gets that um, figurine of baby Jesus, then what that means is that 40 days later in February, they have to host the family and provide um, the traditional food, which is tamales at that time. And that's when the posadas ends or the traditions end for us. So uh, for, for us Mexicans, we love food. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> so we have different types of foods that are very, very traditional during the holidays, um, in depending again of the region of Mexico where you're from. Uh, for example, us, where we were from uh, Michoacan, we grew up with, a, with this soup um, that we do every, every year for the holidays. It's called pozole. And um, it's basically hominy, it's pork uh, with some red sauce, uh, red broth, um, and then you add cabbage, uh, radish, and onion to it in a very spicy um, hot sauce. So that's a traditional food that we typically um, have for, for the holidays. And um, in other parts of the, of the country, uh, for example, Mexico City, they do a lot of the bacalao, which is like dry fish, and then they just put it on top of tostadas. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of salty, but it's very, very good, very traditional in that area. Um, also in Mexico City, they use, uh, or they eat romeritos, which is like a vegetable dish. Um, very, very popular in that area as well. Um, and then we have some traditional drinks. Uh, one of them, it's a ponche, which is like a warm tea. Um, you add apples to it, peach, sugar cane um, and sometimes you know if you like tequila that's typically what we put in there you don't have to uh, we usually make uh, on the side an additional one for the children but it is something that's traditional that we add to that and then we also have tamales that's a very very um, traditional meal uh, we grew up again in Michoacan we grew up with the more traditional tamale which is in a corn husk and that's that's probably the most common that you'll see um, here in, in Washington or really in the US um, and but we have actually also moved towards uh, a different one and this one is, is wrapped in a banana leaf um, and then this one is more from the eastern eastern region uh, around the Gulf of, of Mexico uh, they call it Huasteco and it's just an area in Mexico our family actually moved to that area several years back and so we've kind of adopted um, these type of, of tamales they they both um, can be made with similar um, similar items they're both 
uh, corn based with uh, pork and it's marinated in a, in a red sauce. So very traditional, but depending on where you are from Mexico, you can definitely end up with completely different types of tamales, which I think is something that some people don't, don't know about. You can have sweet tamales, veggie tamales, um, all kinds of shapes, and then, but again, it can also be wrapped in, in different types of leaves. Yeah. And the tamales, it's definitely something that's uh, traditional throughout the entire country in Mexico, um, no matter what region you're from. Um, the tamales will always be part of our tradition. Um, the other foods that we talked about, like I said, it all depends on the region, but the tamales, it's definitely something all over in Mexico. And as you can see, uh, there's, there's some decorations here in our table that we typically use, or that they're just part of our culture, like the sombrero, as you can see. Um, but uh, you know, this is uh, Mexican pottery, basically. So it's, it's una jarra, and um, this is exactly what we use for hot tea, our coffee, chocolate, or anything like that. Um, so that is what um, Mexican pottery is. Also, depending again of, of the religion uh, that you're, you you have, um, nativity. The nativity is very very important for us to have at Christmas. So that's something that we definitely keep at our house. Um, during the um, Christmas time. And then we also have a poinsettia, we call it Buena Noche, uh, and that, that plant is originally from Mexico. So it's, the very, um, it's a plant that we always have in our homes. And to end our presentation for today, um, again, thank you for, for joining and watching this video. Um, again, this is extremely important for us, for our family, but we love to share it. We love to share our traditions. And with that being said, I would love to invite you guys to join us. I am part of the Hispanic Business Professional Association here in Spokane, HVPA. You can find us on our website. You can find us on Facebook. Um, but if you, and if you decide to join us, um, there, we actually celebrate a lot of these traditions throughout the year with different events. So you are welcome to volunteer, be part of our tradition, enjoy it, come visit us, um, be part of the planning. We would love to have you. And I'm part of the Latino Hope Foundation and we have uh, several celebrations as well like HPPA, uh, but the main one that I'd like to invite you to where you can actually experience some of these items uh, or some of these foods and, and so forth is at the uh, Fiesta Spokane and that is in downtown um, Spokane in the summer and it's a whole day's event. We'll have mariachi and vendors, again food, um, and just a great fun um, for, for the whole family. So um, if you want to experience some of what we just talked about, we really encourage you to reach out to, to any of us and uh, volunteer or simply take part in, in some of these fun events.